Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we are in Creativeverse. This is a tutorial on logic and machines. I'm taking a break from my Let's Play. There are all sorts of machines available that you can make in this game. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Now the question is, is this stuff necessary to make in order to play the game? Well, if you just want to get the best armor and tame all the creatures and go all the way to the bottom of the map, uh, no, it's not necessary to make any of these uh, machines. The only machine I would say that you really need to make, besides the processor and the forge and the cooking station, is a, a teleporter. That's really important to be able to get around the map quickly. But all the other machines I'm going to be showing you today are not really necessary. But if you like machines and logic stuff, if you want to make some cool gadgets, if you want to make an adventure map or a mini game, then you'll want to learn about all these machines. All these machines require magnetite, so you're first going to want to get some magnetite, and then you'll be able to unlock the wiring tool. Uh, and once you have the wiring tool, then you'll start to unlock more and more machines. A lot of these machines also use arc stone, so you're going to want to be collecting those. And that means you're going to want to tame several keepas, and you're going to want to feed your keepa the exact food that it likes. So in this case, we've got a pie. If you make a mushroom pie, that is not the exact food that this keepa likes. You want to just make a pie. So that's how you get the arc stones. Once you have your wiring tool, you're going to want to equip it. If you've already got something here uh, set up, you can hit K to cut the wire going to this. So I'll hit K, and now I can click on this to send, and there to receive. And this is a switch and an LED light. Why did that not turn on? Ah, there it goes. I, didn't, I hadn't actually turned it on yet. Now it's turned on. So let's go ahead and cut that and we'll wire this up over there and let me whoops hold on let me get my jetpack off i got it this is not not my usual world and i have a jetpack in this world this is a pressure plate so if i step on this now the led light comes on if you point at the object and hit n to inspect then you get some stuff you can modify. This has a reset delay. So if I set this to 1.5 reset delay, now I'll step on it and I believe it's gonna stay lit longer. Whereas if I had a zero and I step on it, it goes off right away. Uh, normally uh, with a pressure plate, you would bury this of course, uh, but you can turn it on its side and then you can run into it basically there we go and it works that way as well this is a delay gate so signal going into it gets delayed the smallest delay i guess is zero which is no delay but there there's a 0.5 delay that's the smallest you can get really uh, and then that goes up to 10. and this this is a sensor and if we turn on the wiring tool, you can see that I've got the sensor set to sense in this area. And it's wired up to the delay and the light LED over here. So if I walk into this area, you'll see the delay. There was a delay and then the LED lit up. Also, you see that blue howdy there. So if I inspect this, I can change the width and length and height uh, let's go ahead and change this height a bunch and you can set it to, to detect players or creatures or both and you can give it a message that appears when it's triggered. I've just reset the height and it's way up there now. So that's those two. This is a flip-flop gate uh, and if I step on this pressure plate the light goes on so this flips it from being on to off. And if I step on the pressure plate again, the light goes off and it stays off. Now it goes on, stays on. So that's the flip-flop gate. Oh, one more thing. In order to unlock the LED, you're going to need to make a wood-burning lamp. 
Here we have a block phaser. The block phaser makes blocks disappear and reappear. So I'll just uh, do that and boom, that grass up there is gone. And it's real. It's not just invisible, it's actually gone. I can step right where the grass was. And we'll do that and now the grass reappears. Uh, so we'll inspect that and you can see that there's two blocks in front of the block phaser and I can tell it which one I want to disappear by highlighting it in green. It doesn't have any width or length to it, it, it just has height or, or the space in front of it. So it can go eight blocks in front of it. Uh, and you can turn this to its side so it can phase out blocks going this way instead. So this is an arc sign. Uh, the arc sign displays stuff in the air. Uh, and if we look at this, I've got some words here and I've also got some basically HTML uh, to change the color, change the width, and it's got several inputs. It's capable of, of four inputs for numbers and then also one input to turn it off and on. That's what this guy is standing on. Let's do that and the sign turns off and we'll do that and the sign turns on. This is a random number generator and I've got it set to generate a number between 1 and 10. Uh, so you can do that with values here. So here I'm going to trigger the random number generator and it's going to appear on the arc sign right here, that number. There's, a, there's an 8, there's a 3, there's a 1, so that's something that the arc sign can do that a regular sign can't. The regular sign actually can do a lot of HTML stuff. Uh, you change the color stuff, but you can't wire a number going into the gate. Over here we have a math gate, which you might guess. I've got a value of 12 and three, and right now I'm subtracting, so 12 minus three, and you get a nine. And I can change this to add, divide, min, max, I don't know what mod means. Uh, let's just change it to mod and see what value I get. So 12 and three, I got a zero. Okay, let's just change it to divide. So I should get a four, yep. Uh, here's a number pad. Last time I used the number pad, I put in a 56. So let's hit F to use the number pad. I can do four, two, three and confirm, and now you see 423 there. Uh, this is a memory gate. The memory gate is used to store a value. Uh, in this case, I've already got a value in it, and I'm just basically using this as a constant, and so that 20 number is going into the arc sign, and you see it there. Uh, but you could have uh, a number coming into this gate um, from something else and then you've got two things coming into the gate. One is a trigger saying store the number and the other is the number. Then there is logic gates. Now I'm gonna, not going to go into great detail about logic gates but if we inspect this you can see there's AND, OR, XOR, NAND, NOR, and XNOR. Those are your common logic gates, and right now I've got this one set to AND. So with AND, we can turn on this switch and this switch, and then the LED will go off, go on. And I can turn off one of these, and now the LED goes off. So both switches have to be on. That's what an AND gate means. In this case, I've got this one set Oh, excuse me, I gotta deal with something. There we go. Uh, in this case, I've got this one set to OR, and so either one of these switches going on will light the LED. So I can do that one and then turn this one off, and it still stays on. So both of them have to be off for the LED to go off. Now, I'm not going to go into all the other ones here. Mostly you'll be using AND and OR. There'll be some rare cases where you use some of these other ones. This one 
is an inverter gate. Uh, here, this switch is off and this lamp is on. If I turn the switch on, the lamp goes off. This gate is sending out the opposite of what it receives. So if a zero comes in, a one goes out. If a one goes comes in, a zero goes out. Now this is a counter, which counts. So right now I've got a signal coming from over here that's basically a, cl a clock over there. And that is going into the plus sign. So you see there's a plus and a minus. And this one right here is a reset input. So you can see this thing is counting up. One, two, three, four, five, and then goes to zero. So the, so the clock is coming into the adder. So it's adding one each time it gets a signal from the clock. This one is a number comparison gate. It's comparing the signal that it's getting from the counter and comparing it to the number five. And if the signal from the counter is greater than or equal to five, then it's gonna send a signal out. And the signal that it's sending out is going to the reset button and it's also going to the LED. So every time it gets to five, it resets the counter and lights up the LED. Something you can do with AND gates is make a screen out of LEDs. Um, so these are all AND gates and this AND gate is wired to this LED and this AND gate is wired to that LED and so forth. Uh, so right now I've got this one on and this one on, which means that this AND gate is true. So that's why this LED is on. If I switch this to that, and then I can switch this one off, now this LED is on because this is true and this is true. Therefore, this is sending a true input to there. Uh, basically, when I did that, I sort of moved the signal over to here. And now I can move the signal up by leaving this on, but turning this on and turning that off. And now this signal has moved up. So you can see if you had a big screen of LEDs, you could move your light around the screen. Now, in the later game, you can have fans. Now the fans you have to go all the way to the bottom of the world and collect something called Lumite uh, in order to get these fans. So it's a later game item, but it's pretty cool. Um, so right now I've got this to make an elevator. So I'll go up here and here we go. I just went up, teleported up. Well, I didn't teleport up. I just flew up a little bit um, and then I can fly back down and that softens my landing, right? Now there's something funny about this. If I drop, let's see, it was Z I think is to drop a bag. So I'm gonna drop uh, some grass and it's gonna make a bag and the bag is gonna go flying up. So watch this. There it goes. It just disappeared into the sky and it's gonna stay up there because it's gotten out of render distance. The only way I can um, get the bag to come back down is to fly up there. There goes a the bag. So the other thing you could do with fans, these are ice slopes. Uh, so you cut ice into in the processor to make these slopes. If you just put ice here, it'll melt, but the ice slopes won't melt. Uh, so let me just show you what happens here. I'm just going to walk forward a little bit. I'm going to glitch through this fan and I'm not touching anything. It's just the fan is pushing me and I'm sliding along the ice. And so this is a way to transport yourself uh, a pretty long distance if you wanted to build some of these across your world. Let me uh, drop a loot bag here. There it goes, <laughs> flying. Uh, let me try it over here. See if it can make the turn. Boom. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Let me interject here. I had a complicated build that I was showing off, but the video was running long, so I've decided to cut that out, maybe put it into another video later. So I have to say this because I refer to the machine and it would be confusing otherwise. 
The clocks will be the last thing I show you. Uh, there will be blinking lights, so warning if you are epileptic. So this is the delay gate lighting up this. And this is pretty slow. The slowest that the delay gate goes is 0.5. And so it go, it's 0.5 on and 0.5 off, which means it's one second between blinks. I think that's pretty slow. Uh, so I wanted something to go faster. I came up with this, and this is four times as fast as this. Uh, this is just a logic gate with an XOR, and it's wired to itself. So it's, it sends a signal, and it receives the same signal, um, and then this on is going into this receive. Uh, so, I don't know. That's how that works. Unfortunately, this is actually too fast for this machine over here. I tried wiring this up and the machine could not compute. It just, it didn't work. So I had to use this machine, which is also basically an XOR, but it's got one extra logic gate to slow it down. So we've still got an XOR, this one is just an OR, so it basically goes over to here and then goes right back to here. So this is what I used with my machine down there. And this is also what is powering uh, this thing that I showed you earlier. Oh, I forgot to mention, you know, with the delay gate, uh, you only get 10 seconds. And so if you wanted to have something that was like several minutes long. Uh, trying to build that with a bunch of delay gates is kind of a nightmare. But this thing is gonna work a lot better for a long clock because you can set this counter, the number comparison, this can go up to one, sh one number shy of a billion. So that's a long time. That's a lot of counting. So this is what I suggest you use if you need a long timer. Besides the things I've shown you, I don't have a, uh, an example of this, but there's a loot spawner and a mob spawner. Those are used for adventure games. I suppose you could use them for some sort of mini game that had loot spawning and or mob spawning. Uh, now, the mob spawner, those mobs, if you kill them, they don't produce any loot. So you're not going to uh, be able to do a loot farm by using a mob spawner. There's also, besides the mob spawner and the item spawner, there's an inventory sensor that could also be used uh, for mini games or uh, adventure maps, and that detects whether the player has certain items in their inventory. So that's everything I wanted to go over with you guys. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, uh, let me know if you have any questions about any of this stuff. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.